Welcome to Aging Insight with your host, John Ross and Lisa Schollmeyer. This program is made possible by Welcome to another edition of Aging Insight. I'm your host, John Ross, here live in the studio with Lisa Schollmeyer. <laughs> We're right here, ready to talk to you about all of the issues that are related to getting older. You know, we talk to people all the time, whether they're uh, younger folks with disabilities, whether they're people who are perfectly healthy and entering retirement and looking down the road, or whether there are seniors who are uh, having health problems and trying to figure out how they're gonna care for themselves. But almost universally, these people have some very uh, common concerns. They wanna avoid nursing home care if they can. They wanna avoid uh, becoming a burden on their friends and their family. And they wanna avoid going broke, uh, trying to make it through this process. And, and that's what we do professionally but, you know, having done this professionally for years, we've learned that there are so many things that people just don't know out there. And so we've brought you Aging Insight to give you that information and give you all those little tidbits of information that hopefully you can use to address these concerns in your own life. Well, you know, John, you, you said a moment ago that a lot of people that we've, we've talked to, you know, one of the things they want to do is avoid nursing home care. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, you certainly can, but you know, it's going to take some planning on how you want to live in your senior years, uh, particularly if you do end up, you know, having some incapacities or some things that limit, uh, you know, your independent lifestyle. So, you know, so I thought today what we might do is talk about, you know, some of the alternatives to that institutional type care. Uh, particularly focusing on some of the in-home care, you know, options, because oftentimes, you know, our medical needs or our, our just our everyday limitations become the reason that we, you know, consider nursing home care. So let, what kind of resources or what kind of people do we need to surround ourselves with in order to you know make up for our deficiencies in those areas so we can stay home that's uh, that's the number one goal yeah i've had i've had people over the years many many people who have said uh you know i say well let's talk about what would happen if uh if if you needed long-term care um you know what ha what would happen if you needed the kind of care that that would be provided in a nursing home and i'll get this response of John, I'm never going to a nursing home. Yeah, just the statement. Just the statement, never. <laughs> and, and my response is, okay, how? Yeah, what have you done? What, what kind of plans do you have in place? What have you thought about? That's right, because you know, if you've reached the age of 80, your chance of needing that type of assistance before you pass away is almost 90%. So it's, it's, it's just almost guaranteed that you're gonna need some level of assistance. And if, and if you really do want to avoid that institutional type care, that means you're going to have to have that care being provided to you in the home. Right. And so that's where we get to, okay, so, well, okay, great. I'll get care provided for me in the home. It's not really quite that simple <laughs> of a deal, is it? No, it isn't. Um, you know, and John, I wanted to talk about what, what usually happens where we need that care in the home. You know. Most of us certainly think about a major medical event, you know, that stroke or heart attack or that fall and where we break a hip or something. But oftentimes, you know, we can recover from those things, but oftentimes it's not the medical needs that make us have to consider other care alternatives. It's our everyday limitations that we kind of acquire, a lot of us acquire as we get older, and those are called the activities of daily living. And those activities include, uh, you know, managing your medication, being able to bathe yourself and provide for your own hygiene needs, the ability to cook and prepare a meal, 
the ability to, to feed yourself, the ability to transfer or move about, you know, from your bedroom to the bathroom, you know, to the recliner, you know, those things are not medical in nature. Uh, but if you become limited in those areas or some of them, you're going to need some assistance. Right. And so that, you know, and so it, the key is figuring out who's going to be providing that assistance for you. So, so the first, really the first issue in this is figuring out what are your needs. That's right. So, you know, is this a medical need or is this more activities of daily living type assistance that is needed? So that's the, that's the first step. Yeah, and, and there could even be other needs because, you know, you've got to look at um, maybe, maybe you could do some of these things, but hey, maybe you just like the idea of there being somebody around the house to talk to. Yeah. So. You know, so there can be some emotional needs that go along with this. So the first real, when, you talk, when you're talking about having care in the home, the first real part of this is kind of assessing the needs. What are your needs? What do you, you know, do you need help with bathing? Do you need help with these other things? What about, um, you know, what about specific medical issues? For example, are you a diabetic and, and do you have to have insulin shots? Uh, uh, you know, do you have other medical treatments that have to be administered? Because that's gonna dictate who you bring into that home to help you out. Well, that's right, you know, because if, if staying home is going to require some medical assistance, you know, someone who's got some education and training, a license of some kind where they can come in and do diabetes care and wound care uh, therapies, uh, perhaps to keep you uh, at your best and being able to, to transfer and, and walk around, you know, th those are professionals or, or paraprofessionals, and that type of care is, you know, certainly it's going to be more expensive. So if that's the care you need, you need to plan for the additional expense for the medically based type care. Um, but if you really need just some household assistance and some personal assistance with things like bathing, you know, that in and of itself does not require any medical knowledge. And so that is what we call, you know, that, that is unskilled or non-medical type care. And, you know, there's a whole different pool of people who can provide that type of care. And it usually costs less to bring in a, uh, you know, that, that household person that can do a little light housekeeping and some meal preparation and, and help you occasionally with your personal needs like high, you know, bathing. Uh, so that's a different category of home caregiver. Yeah, so, so really kind of the first thing here is a needs assessment. Figure out what kind of medical, emotional, um, physical needs that you have that need to be addressed because that's gonna dictate who provides that care? Do you need an RN? Do you need a, a certified nurse assistant? Do you just need somebody who uh, wants to help somebody else out but doesn't really have a lot of training? You know, uh, are there specialty issues like diabetes or Alzheimer's that require a little bit of knowledge? You know, so all of these things are important. You gotta figure those things out uh, so that you can figure out who you're gonna get to provide this care. Now, that's not the end of the discussion. There's certainly a lot more to this, but you're gonna to need to stick around, and when we come back, we're gonna keep talking about hiring caregivers and what you need to think about when you do so. So we'll be right back. Hi there, I'm Larry Sims. It's been my privilege for the past several years to be a volunteer board member of Hospice of Texarkana. And there I'm able to represent community members like you. We continually customize our end-of-life care to better meet the needs of our community. As an example, our medical director and nurse practitioner still make visits to homes and facilities. Call today to learn more about the help we can give your family. Hospice of Texarkana, the nonprofit hospice established in 1985 for the community, by the community. As things get older, they require more care. This car and I have seen a lot of miles together, but because I take care of her, she runs just like she did in 1955. 
That's why I chose the Wadley Senior Clinic with an individualized care plan designed just for me and a convenient location off Jefferson Avenue. They have everything to keep me running like new. It's not about the miles, it's about the journey. Let the Wadley Senior Clinic keep you happy, healthy, and cruising down the road of life. Welcome back to Aging Insight. I'm Lisa Schollmeyer here with John Ross. And you know, today we're addressing probably one of the most uh, concerning issues for folks is they want, as they age and they want to stay in their own homes and age in place. That's uh, gotta be one of the top priorities for most of our seniors. And one of the ways that you can stay home and age in place is to obtain the right assistance and caregiving that you need at home so that you can stay there and avoid that uh, institutional or nursing home care. So we talked in the first segment about figuring out what it is, what type of care it is that you need. You know, is it, is it medical care of some kind that's gonna require some specialty training and licenses? Or is it really more unskilled, you know, household uh, type of assistance? So that's, that's really the first uh, question for yourself. But the next step is once you kind of decide uh, or you feel like you know which type of care it is that you need, you know, where do you find someone to provide that care? And you know, John, the first place everybody looks typically is within their own families. <laughs> Yeah, you know, family caregivers, um, and I don't have the specific numbers right now, but uh, family caregiving, if, 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 if all of the family members that were providing care were being paid for their service at the going rate of caregivers, it would be the single largest entity or business type in, in our country. We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars um, that, that are essentially being made up by unpaid familial caregivers, these family members. Um, I see people every day that uh, um, have a, a family member that lives next door or lives in town, uh, maybe has even moved in with them, a lot of different kinds of things from from family members, but of course, you know, Lisa, with uh, a lot of family members, they've got jobs, they've got other right. things, and so as the care needs increase, family members. Well, you know, and John, on that same lines, you know, sometimes a family member caregiver will be more likely to um, kind of be flaky um, or, you know, put you off for a need just because they feel like this is family, we can do that as opposed to maybe more of that employer-employee relationship, you know, where people expect to show up at a certain time, they know that there's certain tasks that need to be performed. So, you know, family caregivers are wonderful, but, you know, sometimes we can wear them out to the point that they don't wanna provide the care, or they can be inconsistent about uh, providing the care that's necessary. So sometimes, you know, maybe that's a backup plan, but maybe we should get something a little more formal. Well, you know, and, and a lot of times I've, I've talked to, uh, I remember talking to this one lady and she, she said, well, I'm not bringing any strangers into my house because they'll come in and steal all my stuff. <laughs> um, in the end, it was her children that stole all oh, of her stuff. Right. Um, in fact, <laughs> elder abuse is, is most often committed by family members. So whether you're talking about physical or financial abuse. And yeah. so, uh, so yeah, there's lots of reasons why family members may not be it. But, but then you get to, okay, if we are gonna bring in some independent person, do we use, say, a professional organization? Yeah, a, a, a service. And there's several businesses that have popped up in our community because uh, unskilled care services are you know the biggest growth areas when it comes to small businesses, franchises, things like that. So we have a slew of senior care services that have popped up in our community, and these are businesses that you know if you uh, call in, they you know they they do a needs assessment, they they work up a file, they connect you with a a care caregiver or givers, and you decide how many hours a week those services are needed 
and uh, you essentially sign a written contract with that business that you will pay so much per hour with so many hours being purchased on a weekly basis for the kind of care services that you've specifically laid out in a written contract. And there are some, uh, there's some pros to using a service like that. You know, John, first of all, you know, a service like that, typically they have performed background checks on their employees. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been some uh, level of training about things like confidentiality right. um, and some and some things like, you know, uh, helping a senior transfer from place to place, lifting and things like that. So you get some basic training as well as you get someone else handling all the paperwork that goes with hiring someone. <laughs> right, you know, the, the personal insurance, the taxes, the all of the things that go into uh, what is essentially a business is being taken care of by a business, not by you. Um, and of course, the other big issue in all of this is liability. Sure. Because um, if that, uh, you know, if we're talking about, say, a, a family caregiver or just the lady down the street, um, if that person injures you, you have almost no recourse against them. If they steal from you, uh, you have almost no recourse against them. Um, whereas if we're talking about a, a company, that company is going to have liability insurance, they're going to have uh, surety bonds and, and things like that to ensure that if their people um, cause damage, that that damage can be compensated. Well, and so that is some of the benefits of hiring through a company, but you know, there's always trade-offs. And you'll typically pay more per hour for a caregiver that uh, that is contracted for through a service. So right. oftentimes a lot more because it is a business. And so while the person doing the caregiving may only be getting paid um, $8, $9, $10 an hour, the company is charging you $15, $18, $20 an hour because they're making a profit sure. off this. It is a business yeah. after all. It's not a, it's not a, a for, uh, not for profit. Uh, so. Um, so that is a big trade-off there. Whereas, again, the lady down the street, um, who may also have the training, maybe she's a retired nurse or maybe she's a retired nursing home worker, um, is perfectly capable of doing the same type of work and is willing to do it um, for the $8 or $10 an hour that yes. she would have gotten paid anyway. Yeah, so, so there's a couple of different sources there. You know, you can go through a service or you can connect to an individual through, you know, church or our neighbors or other people that you know, uh, because there are people that just individually contract out to be sitters and caregivers. Uh, but, uh, you know, when we come back, we'll talk about some of your obligations if you do contract out uh, individually with uh, someone, as well as a couple of the other issues to look out for if you hire a caregiver to come into your home. So we'll be right back. As things get older, they require more care. This car and I have seen a lot of miles together, but because I take care of her, she runs just like she did in 1955. That's why I chose the Wadley Senior Clinic with an individualized care plan designed just for me and a convenient location off Jefferson Avenue. They have everything to keep me running like new. It's not about the miles, it's about the journey. Let the Wadley Senior Clinic keep you happy, healthy, and cruising down the road of life. Hi there, I'm Larry Sims. It's been my privilege for the past several years to be a volunteer board member of Hospice of Texarkana. And there I'm able to represent community members like you. We continually customize our end-of-life care to better meet the needs of our community. As an example, our medical director and nurse practitioner still make visits to homes and facilities. Call today to learn more about the help we can give your family. Hospice of Texarkana, the nonprofit hospice established in 1985 for the community by the community. Welcome back to Aging Insight. I'm John Ross here with Lisa Schollmeyer and we're talking about caregivers today on Aging Insight. 
And specifically, you know, if you're bringing a caregiver into your home, what are some of the things that you need to consider? And, and so far we've discussed that the first thing you need to figure out is what your actual needs are, because that helps you figure out the type of caregiver that's gonna best meet those needs. Do they need any sort of specialized training and that sort of thing? Um, but once you figure out who that person is, then you've gotta figure out where do you find this caregiver? Uh, are you talking about maybe bringing a family member in that has its own issues? Um, if not, uh, we're talking about third parties and are you, you know, is this an individual that you're hiring or is it in a company? And, and of course, there's a lot of good things that come with hiring a company. They have insurance, they have trained people. If you don't like one of them, uh, they can send somebody different. <laughs> right. If somebody doesn't show up for work, they'll send a different person. And that way somebody is there at your house when you need them, um, but you pay for that. that. Right, on average, 15 to $18 an hour. Right, um, and so there's a, there's a cost premium associated with that, which is why a lot of people end up looking at individuals. Uh, maybe uh, somebody down the street, a friend, a neighbor, somebody from church, somebody they just met on the street. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, we've certainly seen all different types, and some of them are wonderful, and some of them are monumentally bad. Um, so this last little bunch is kind of the ones that we're talking about here is, is these individual caregivers. Right, these individual caregivers. You know, uh, back in the day, you could, you know, if you had uh, somebody who knew somebody, you know, lady at church that did care services, you know, she'd come out and a lot of times you just write them a check for, you know, however much per week or, and uh, that would just be that. Or a lot of our seniors would actually, you know, go cash a check at the bank and pay that caregiver in cash. And, you know, these days it's, uh, if, you, if you are telling someone what time to be at your home, what kind of task they're to do when they're at your home and what time they are getting off then essentially you have an employee. That's right. And so the IRS requires that if you have an employee that you withhold Social Security and Medicare taxes and that you also pay an employer's portion of those taxes to the U.S. Treasury. So of course that means there's some paperwork and some calculations that have to happen but I can assure you that any caregiver that you hire to be in your home is the IRS will consider an employee. They will not consider them an independent contractor. So you will have obligations to handle certain tax filings and tax aspects for that caregiver. Right, and remember, the IRS decides who's an employee and who's a, uh, an independent contractor, not you. So even if you have them sign something that says okay. that they're an in independent contractor, even if you bring in uh, three bishops and they all are going to swear that this person uh, wanted to be an independent contractor, was okay with it, the IRS doesn't care. This person is an employee, the rules are clear as a bell, and if you don't withhold that sort of stuff, you can get in trouble. Now, of course, I, ha I also have a lot of uh, um, these caregivers that don't want that stuff reported. They want to get paid cash Sure. because they're not planning on reporting this income and not yeah. paying taxes on it and that can fall back on you as well. Sure, it sure can and you know it's one thing if this is an occasional type circumstance where you know uh, you know just like when you had babysitters for your small children I mean you didn't report that to the IRS but it's a thing and different thing entirely if we are having a regular uh, caregiver in our home that's an employee you take care of your tax issues or the IRS will come looking for you. And you know, if that caregiver wants everything reported off the books, you know, after you've explained that you've gotten information that you must report, maybe that caregiver doesn't have the integrity and the honesty that you want to have in your home. Uh, so that's a consideration. <laughs> it is, and of course, a lot of times they're doing it because they don't want, uh, they don't want it to affect their social security or some other reason, but Unfortunately, if you're just paying cash, especially if you're paying actual paper cash where there's no record of it whatsoever, because there's no record, there's also nothing stopping them from coming back in a month or two and claiming that you have not paid them. Right. Um, or suing you or filing a complaint. Uh, there's so many bad things. So, um, you know, 
pay the person properly, get some advice with a, a, tax, uh, a tax preparer like a CPA, um, but also put this in writing. Yeah, very important to have something in writing to establish what your relationship is, what the duties and uh, services that you're expecting, and, and uh, you know, and actually doing it right, you know, taking care of all the paperwork, taking care of the taxes, could actually benefit you because there are some benefits, such as with the Veterans Administration, that they will allow you to claim uh, your caregiver as an, a medical expense, and that could help you get some VA benefits. Right, so there's, there's basically every reason in the world to paper this and do it correctly, do it the way the law provides. Um, there's actually benefits to doing that. Mm -hmm. it, it might take a little, uh, might be a little cost up front to get it all set up correctly, but well worth every penny because that's what prevents it from going wrong. And comparing the cost of getting it set up to the cost of it going wrong, right. there is no comparison. There, there, there's just no comparison whatsoever. So, um, you know, figure out what your needs are, get those needs addressed by the appropriate person, and whether that's a family member, whether that's a company, or whether it's just some lady down the street, get some advice to make sure that you're doing this right and you're setting it up correctly from a tax standpoint, from a legal standpoint, from a personal protection standpoint. Um, but you can do all of that, and because now you know, and you know from watching this show, um, and of course, if we haven't answered your questions, you could also watch uh, or call us on our radio show every Saturday at noon on 98.5. And of course, there's a few other ways. Yeah, that's right. Um, you can certainly watch reruns or prior episodes you may have missed of Aging Insight on KLFI TV uh, website. And you can also find us at aginginsight.com where you can uh, catch up on some information and some previous shows. That's right. Well, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this week's Aging Insight program with John Ross and Lisa Schollmeyer. This program is made possible by 